Professor Mark Higdon. This video is for FN 341 and in this video I will give you some tips on developing a gene sketch. On Blackboard I have posted a template file uh, which you can open up and has a basic outline of a pair of genes pre-drawn for you. Uh, and what I've also done is I added in some top stitching that you can certainly manipulate and work with. And you'll see the top stitching that I created. I use the stroke window tool, which I've shown in uh, some of the previous videos in terms of how to create top stitching. Um, and essentially, it's just using this dashed line box. And I put in six points for the dash and six points for the gap. Um, and this can be treated like any other line. And you can also manipulate it with the anchor points, depending on you know, how you want the um, stroke to line up uh, wherever it might be on the pants. Uh, you can see that this also is top stitching here. Uh, the top stitching is a little bit smaller. And so if I ungroup that and focus directly just on the line, I may have to do that a couple of times. Let's see. There we go. And you can see here that the, the dash is much smaller here. If I make that six and the gap six, it will keep the lines so that they are um, the same. This line is actually a little bit thicker. And that's because the weight is one point. And this weight is a half a point. If I want to bump that up to a full point, then the top stitching will match. Okay. Um, I also created a belt loop, and the way that I created this was uh, I made a box and then also made two lines, um, detail lines, no fill color, and again, I used the dash line uh, sequence. So all of these pieces you can certainly ungroup, you can manipulate. Um, if I was going to continue to work on the front view here, I created a box that could be used for the waistband. And again, you can adjust this depending on how you want it. Um, for the fly, I would continue to bring this up all the way to the top because that would then indicate that this line is going to completely open up. Now you'll see that the box is hiding that line that would mean that the box was drawn after that line was drawn. So if I select that line, do a right click, arrange and bring that to the front, it will now be visible. Okay. Um, if I wanted to with this waistband, let's see here, here we go. Um, I can actually curve this a little bit if I wanted to, just to make it look a little bit more three dimensional. And the tool that I usually use for that is Object, Envelope, Distort, Make with Warp. And that will open up another window. Make sure you have Preview checked. And if you slide the bend so that it's a little left of center, usually around a negative 13, negative 14, you see that it bends the box, which is the waistband. And it will make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'll click OK to leave that. Um, I can actually make a copy of this and create the back of the pair of pants. So if I hold down the Option key, drag a copy above it, do a right-click, Transform, and Reflect. In this case, do a horizontal, and that will flip it so that the back of the waistband is a little bit up. Then if I bring this down, do a right click, arrange, and send to the back. I'm now sending that to the back of the front. With the direct selection tool, I can then tuck these behind it. So you can sort of get a sense here in terms of how that waistband would actually look. Um, if I wanted to, I could actually create the placement for a little label.
And later on, we will actually develop a ticket and labeling guide, and you could actually go back and add the label to your sketch. If I group this, I can then move this down, and you'll see that it sits a little bit on the top of the pant. I can make it look a little bit more narrow. So it looks a little bit more three-dimensional in terms of what a waistband would actually look like. In terms of the belt loop, I do arrange, bring that to the front. I can make this a little smaller, shorter. And then I can hold down the Option key with the Selection tool and left click and drag and make a copy to repeat it. With this detail line here, it's sitting behind the waistband again. So I can do another right click arrange and bring that to the front. So now that's a little bit more visible. With the direct selection tool, I can grab it and move it down so it's just at the top. If I go to the ellipse tool, I can make a little circle for the um, button. If I want to, with the pen tool, I could make a little bit of a indication for the buttonhole. So I've just drawn sort of a open um, loop. And if I select that, do a right click arrange, send to the back, the button will sit on top of that. If I select both of those, I can go to object group. And then I can move the two down. So those are the way, that's the way that I would go about, um, you know, using this template in terms of developing a jean sketch further. Um, I could add a couple of belt loops to the back. Again, hold down the option key, move it to the back, and then do a range and send to the back. And then I can hold down the option key again. Oops. Didn't do that. There it is. And if I click on that little blue circle in the center, hold down the option key, I can make a copy and send that to the back just to give an indication in terms of where the back belt loops would be. Okay. So for the back view, I would essentially do the same thing in terms of with the belt loop and the waistband. Um, in this case, I could just draw the waistband and because the back is up on the left hand side of the front view, I would draw the back so that the back waistband was also up. There we go. And I can adjust that a little bit with the selection tool. And then in terms of the belt loop, I can make a copy, bring that to the front, and adjust that, make a copy of that again. Waistband, I can make a little shorter so it sits in a little bit better. And then I also gave you a pocket which you can work with for the back. So you want to make sure you arrange and bring that to the front. And hold down the option key with the selection tool and you can make a copy of that as well. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, Please feel free to email me, mark underscore Higdon at fitnyc.edu. Uh, the last thing that I'll show you here is with the pen tool, I can put in some top stitching to show the bottom hem. And because it's a detail line, I'll remove the fill color. And you want to make sure that you have your stroke window open. Check the dashed box. It should default at what you did before. So when you draw the line, 
then hit the selection tool or the shortcut for that um, is the V key and then click on the background then hit the P key for pen and again you can make a left click with one point left click with the second point then hit the V key to select it V is in Victor on your keypad and then you can left click on the background P key for the pen tool make one anchor point let go make the next anchor point then hit the V key to select it and left click on the background so I try to use the shortcuts of the pen tools and the selection tool as much as I can and that's it okay so if you have any questions again please email me mark underscore Higdon at fitnyc.edu Thanks so much.